sip wine, wine, wine Kick my feet up when I get time And as I recline, take another sip Let my thoughts on wine, wine Sip it and spill it What is poppin', everyone? What's poppin', niggas? How we feeling? We're feeling good. I like that. I'm feeling great. I'm going to say, today has been feeling like it's dragging on, and I don't know if it's because of the weather. I don't know if it's because it's Monday, but it's doing what it need to do. I feel like the weather has been changing so much, and I feel like, can you pick a side, please? They never sometimes it's hot, side. sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's hot, cold. I'm going to just pick a motherfucking side so I can figure out how I'm supposed to dress. Period. But honestly, even when you dress for how it's supposed to be the weather, it's going to change on you. Right. So just be prepared to be like half slutty, half dressed up, mm -hmm. half some, half this. Because y'all see what I got on the top, but on the bottom's a whole different party. Okay. You know? So right. today we have a guest with us. And we're going to try something new when we have a guest. Well, instead of us doing word association, we're going to do tonight's conversations. So Sammy has two cards that she's going to read. And our guest is going to... Answer them and then introduce himself or introduce yourself at first. I think just um answer them then introduce yourself. <laughs> no problem. No I problem. I think I like it that way. Okay. All right. Answering them, I might introduce myself the right way by <laughs> Right. Um, <clears throat> what was the last lie you told and what was the reason? Last lie I told. Um probably somebody I was on my way. And yeah. I wasn't on the way yet. That's not juicy enough. That is not a good lie. See, that's why I knew to do more than one because that but was that the, was that's really the last lie I told today. Okay, what was uh, what was the worst lie you told recently? The worst lie I told yeah. recently. <laughs> what is that? It's like I want to get to the thick of things. Um, the thick of things. Probably I miss you too. Oh, Aww. you didn't miss her? No. Nah. Oh Aww. well. Shit. I really would want someone to tell me that they don't miss me if they don't, so I can stop being delusional. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want me thinking, oh yeah, he missed me too. You got to start being honest to these bitches. I'm sorry. Yeah. But honesty bring out um, anger out of some, out of females for sure. But sometimes that's that's necessary. I think if you allow that behavior to continue, it's only going to progress. I that's, think I'm just. I, think, I just think I'm take. nice. Honesty brings out anger in a lot of women. That's a. Um, that's a I always say guys always scared to hurt our feelings. Like that's the thing. I just don't. And I'd rather you hurt my feelings so I can stop being the Lulu. Yeah, I think. For real? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. For, like, at least for me, I would rather you hurt my feelings. So you know, I might be mad at the moment, but I'll get over it real quick. Because yeah. you know, it's not gonna be. It's never that serious to me. Because we always say like we always be like, oh my man, my man, my man. And they were like, this nigga like, oh this bitch texting me again. <laughs> It's like, you do not want to be that bitch on the other end where this nigga's like, mad that you texting him, but he acting like he not. Exactly. So just consider that next time you tell someone you miss them too. Just I consider mean, it. I it mean, it ain't mean that, I ain't mean that, you know, I don't, I don't mess with you, but I just, I don't No, you. that's not what we what, what we're saying. If you don't miss, miss me, her, don't, don't say you miss me. Oh, no, for real. It's just that yeah, simple. for real. <laughs> Man. He said, oh, for real. Yes, Man. girl. That's cold. I ain't know that. All right, what's the next card? All right, the next one is, could you continue to be with someone who you are no longer physically attracted to? Why or why not? That's Absolutely a good one. not. Okay. <laughs> well, people say men are visual creatures. It's Absolutely not. Even, not. It's not. The, niggas will not choose you just because you're a good woman. They choose you because you look good. Absolutely. I know. You make them feel good. I don't know. I don't know nothing about your thoughts or anything when I first see you. The first thing is automatically physical attraction. But they say, well, you continue attraction. to be with someone. So you were worth the, with them initially and you were attracted to them. Yeah. Yeah. So you can continue to be with someone that you're no. attracted to? Oh. <laughs> no. It's not happening. That leads to temptation of being attracted to someone else. But don't you think that it's natural for people to be attracted to other people, even if you have a spouse, though? Thanks. My yeah. thing is, don't you think your spouse ain't, is going to change? You know, you, you think yeah. she'll be fine forever? Well, if that's, if that's your... <laughs> damn. If that's your real... Like, if that's who you're really in love with, mm -hmm. the attraction is only going to grow. Okay. And no matter like what, that. no matter what her body frame do, or you know she get older, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you really in love with us, you always gonna look at her like, man, I, I that's that's. So it's very contradictory then, because you just said. But no, he's I won't be he's with old. nobody if I'm not attracted. Oh, he's to old. <laughs> And if I'm not attracted to you, that means I don't really, I'm not really there with you. Yeah. Okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? Fair enough. I, I don't know. I can be with someone I'm no longer physically attracted to. For what know? reason? 
<laughs> no, why is that? I feel the same for what reason? Yeah. <laughs> if it's um, if it's the lifestyle is makes sense, I was financially. Say. Like if the life I'm comfortable in the lifestyle makes sense, I'm not gonna leave you. I mean, he you, said what he said financially. Yeah, financially. If just, say, just say yes, bitch. Say yes, because <laughs> oh, you over here trying to dance yeah, around it. Go, <laughs> like, bitch, just say you yes. You trying to beat around the bush, man? Because <laughs> I'm not gonna stop leaving. I'm not gonna leave my husband and comfortable lifestyle because he's no longer a chat. That, to me, that's not a good. So you'll leave a man because he's broke, but you won't leave him because he's ugly. If he stays broke for a long time, yeah, you're getting left. But mm. um. If you're if you gain some weight or you do something because like looks can always change like you can always fix up some things. I'm not gonna leave you because you're growing old because I'm growing old with you. like those, those are not things to me is a good enough reason for me to live leave my husband. So you can you can honestly like, say even you, if he gets like in a wheelchair or he breaks an arm like anything like that. Do you not, see how many circles she's trying to go yeah, around to she's get trying around to make the it such a big kid. She's trying to say I'm a good person yeah. for so long <laughs> if it makes sense for me without saying it. I think that makes sense. Why would you? Why would you leave your man? Cause he's ugly. Because he's ugly. Okay. Well, shit. To me, you being ugly is not a good enough reason for me to leave you. Well, cause you you do. She likes medium ugly men. So you would you, off the muscle. You would date. You you would be attracted to an ugly nigga. Like if an ugly nigga approach you and you look at him, be like, oh, he might. No, there's he a level of ugliness. Yeah, so there's a level of ugly <laughs> she does. But she do like a nigga with a little sprinkle of ugliness. I do. Like, I do like a rough nigga, a rough looking man. But yes. to me, that's attractive. Rough, not ugly though. Well, I'm talking about real aggressive looking. I don't know how to explain it. Like but... dirty look. <laughs> no. Oh. And, you know what? I can't even speak for her, but I know when someone's her type and when someone's not yeah. her type. She yeah. literally, knows the world, I, we went out last night, and yeah. there was this one guy that came up to her. And granted, in my opinion, I was like, yeah, he uh, ugly. He ain't nothing. Uh. But I knew it was too ugly for Sammy. <laughs> and then there was another nigga that came in, and immediately I just saw her body language change. And I was like, that's her type. Yeah. And so I was you, like, I was like, Sammy, you like him? She's like, that's my man. That's not my man, but that's my man. I said, because I can like just on, tell. You, 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 the, you, the, you the dreadhead go teeth style? No. What? I like clean cut guys. Like, I like mm. fades. I like nice teeth. I like okay. very well kept. Okay. Um, so you ain't too, uh, you ain't too, you ain't too ugly. I said there's a limit to the ugliness. I made that very clear. There's no amount of money is going to make me, like, I don't care I remember. Right, so, was, yeah. So, so you would you would you would deal with a little ugly, but what is the first thing that you look at? You're watching your shoes. <laughs> yeah, you're watching your shoes. That's where men wear their money. We say that yeah. all the time. If you have a great, nice watch, watch and you have shoes, some nice shoes, smile, nice fade. Mm-hmm. Um, then you have a good conversation. Where's your head at? You know, yeah. type shit. But um, other than that. No, I would not leave a man because he's ugly, y'all. I just wouldn't. That's, you can't because you you like ugly niggas. <laughs> <laughs> How you gonna leave him because he's ugly? <laughs> With all these considered introduce yourself because we having a fucking uh, conversation. Yeah, niggas bad. don't even know who the fuck you is yet. Man, my name is Layton. Better known, a lot of people know me as Labo. Um, I am a restaurant owner in the city of Houston, and I'm privileged to be here. I appreciate y'all. Okay, so having tell me them today. your handles and X, Y, and Z. Um, like I said, I own a restaurant in Third Ward it's called Layton's. Um, is that the place that does the um the hood ramen? Yes, yes, is ramen the, and lamb. Ramen, is I, I know, but it's so crazy because it doesn't have like traditional ramen shit in there. So no, it's not. I think I saw like what lamb chops and shit in there. Yeah, That's lamb, lamb shit. lobster. Yeah, Girl, it, it it's, is what it it's is. De- okay. it's, it's definitely traditional uh, survival pack elevated. For sure. <laughs> Like how you said the survival pack elevated. elevated That's yeah, lovely sure. way to put well, I like it. That's that great. Sure. Yeah. Good branding. So yeah. um Instagram. Yeah, Instagram is Layton's underscore third ward HTX. My personal IG is Labo for President with a Z. Okay. Would you yeah. ever run for president? Absolutely would not. I already I already been the president before. Oh. Uh, of what? Are you like a f- uh, in fraternity or something? Nah, just life for a period. <laughs> yeah, I'm about the United States. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> just life in general. Okay, so let's get into our PSA. Yeah. So something did piss me off this week, and you know the aunties gotta always give it to y'all when it's pissing us off. I need y'all young niggas to stop talking to me in abbreviations. I only know so much. I'm getting old, and I don't want to keep up with the trends. I know what I know, and I don't want to don't, and I don't want to learn no more tricks. Okay, and that's what I'm saying. Okay. I hate when um, people text GD. GD? GM, what's that? I'm sorry, GM. That's yeah, an abbreviation. Yeah, I'm like, that's General the one Motors? Like, what are we talking about? Cars, babe? Don't text me GM. It's so lazy. Yeah. It's like a second thought, too. It's just no effort. 
And a bitch love effort. That's one thing a bitch will like. We like some effort. Um, let's get into motherfucking story time. Mm-hmm. So you sent me this video, so you can want to talk about it. Cause oh, I just was, I feel like because I just said a PSA. Okay, I mean, well I'll talk about yeah. it then. Okay, so there's this video of this woman crying on her wedding day, which girl, okay. And um, she was pretty much saying about how her man that she is married and broke up with her for eight months. And for those eight months, she told him she loved him every day. She did everything to make him know that she was going to be there for him no matter what. And then there's a nigga on the side. Well, let me just say man because he's definitely not a nigga. Um, Very much nigga tendency. Yeah, he's a, but he did have nigga tendency. <laughs> right into his boys like, yeah, been the one boys like she was uh, making sure I got what I needed. She was making sure she told me she loved me every day, even though she knew there was a chance we were never going to be back together. Right about still, it. She was still by my side riding. I was like, ah! I just feel like how how embarrassing is it that you love someone more than you respect yourself? My thing is, if you did it, why did you have to add it to your wedding video? Why, why you? is that a part of your wedding video that the man broke up with you? Because we like to glamorize struggle love so much to make people realize, like make people think like this is this is probably as good as it's gonna get for you. Girl. What's your I, take on I that? Know they what's that, what's that song when she started that song off where she say it's better to have a half man than no man at all? Oh, that's and to the yeah. That's my shit. <laughs> so Do you look, agree with that sentiment? It's no. better to have like something I, than nothing. I, I believe if that's what you want to settle for, mm-hmm. if that's okay with you, okay. if you feel like, hey man, look, I'm cool with this little shit I got at the crib. I ain't trying to go look for nothing else. I'm cool with this. I know he got these negatives. But I don't want to go search for nothing else. I'm just be happy with what I got. I'm. It's called content. But right. question: Doesn't settlement also go to your self respect? Because I feel like if you're settling for something that you ultimately know is as good as you're gonna get, mm-hmm. is that not saying that you don't respect or love yourself enough to seek what's on the other side? Because on the other side, it might be loneliness. Right? Is, is that not okay for people? It's not. It, I'm not. It, it, it's okay to kind of damn your. What you're looking for now to try to see if something's going to work for you, it is. It's okay because it might end up working out for you. Question, do you feel like that came with age with you saying that or do you feel like you've always felt that way? I've always been a first chance type of person. So if I ever get myself into a situation, I'm going to give it a first chance. Okay. Um, okay. But I do also believe that it's self-value. So however you value yourself... Or some people just scared of starting over. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a that's a lot. That's a big step. Starting over. So why I'm gonna just stay right here where I'm at. Yeah, I don't there's start only over. so much abuse you can take. In my opinion, like it depends on how you know how big the problems are. If it's something that's bearable, yeah. But something like some of these bitches stand for. Like what's that lady who who got married to a man and he had three babies on the way already? Three outside babies. Oh yeah, but he, was, but he was an NBA uh, NFL player though. Yeah, but still, that is, like, that's an still, excuse. Listen, so I can go to the I, if I go to the NFL, I can do whatever I want to. But still, but we just yourself. we just said that's enough for some people. Oh yeah. She said she's not gonna leave her nigga if he ugly. She's not gonna leave him because he got three babies. <laughs> yeah. There's a settlement. But, but why though? <laughs> because he got that money. He got the money. Yeah. And Samuel, she wasn't gonna leave because he had the money. Three babies and being ugly are two way different things. Please don't compare the two. <laughs> Please don't compare them at all. But um, let's get to our ick of the week. Um, so my ick of the week is, I just need y'all to know, y'all men are kind of scary sometimes. Okay. Um, y'all y'all do weird shit. Uh, for example, uh, what's gonna say? Are you gonna tell the story or are you not gonna tell the story because it might be actually? I'm not telling that story. I don't okay. want to call attention to what happened. I'm just yeah. I want to uh, hear it. I don't know the story. I want to hear it. I'll tell you later. All right. Uh, pretty much, the thing is, y'all are weird. Just don't, just, just don't be weird. That's Stop it. Stop putting women in unsafe situations yeah. that we have to decide if you being a creep or if you just being. I don't know what the fuck else you. I being. don't know what the fuck to even call it. Creepy. Creepy. Weird. We. I don't. It's just. You know what? Let's move on. But yeah, okay. stop being weird. So my ick of the week is cyber bullies because we tend to get a lot of cyber bullies because y'all do not agree with our opinions. Do not go to our page and thinking that you can bully us because I'm pretty sure that my skin is pretty fucking thick. So going to our page trying to devalue us or make us, uh, 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 it's not working. So you got to either try harder or reroute yourself or come up with new material. I want some new material. If you're going to cyber bully me, do it right. So that's where I'm at. Because they can't say nothing but, oh, um, single motherhood or yeah something like that like fatherless behavior fatherless behavior or enjoy your cats yeah. or like you're that's gonna be lonely the you're never gonna get a man yeah. but I'm you like, can't call me ugly or broke they so. can't okay so anyways the girls are back out again with another messy ass episode of Sip and Spill we create conversations all oh, wow Sip and wine I go by the thumb motherfucking Sammy and I'm ambitious Mexico Terrain oh 
So let's get into some motherfucking wine facts so we can get into some motherfucking tea time. Tea time. So y'all, this week I did absolutely no research. Um, so we're just going to read off the bottle. It's a French wine. Um, I can't pronounce it, so I'm not going to try. Uh, it's supposed to be an easy drinking wine made with the grapes of the highest quality from the French word region of Burgundy. <laughs> um, it's a hundred percent grape, a plump wine with notes of strawberry, black cherry, and spice. Best paired with mao cheese or poultry dishes. All question, right. question, question. Mm-hmm. Is that a Pinot? Is that a Cab? Is I that don't a... know. It doesn't say. It just says it's from France. So I'm. It may be, maybe a red blend. Maybe. Who knows? But let's see what it tastes Y'all, like. Y'all, I went to this 30% wine. 30% alcohol, though. Yeah, I went to this wine thing yesterday. Amazing. I'm going to bring one of them the next time we record. I was living. Oh, you I- savage. You drink your wine with tequila? She do. That I don't. Crazy. I do. It gives a little bit of kickback. That's uh, I drank crazy. my wine. Did you really? I mean, I drank my uh, shot, yeah. Oh, you did already? While you was talking, girl, I took wow, it. Wow, girl. But you know, I feel like I don't be liking to see stars sometimes. You don't I, like a lot of wine. No. Nah. Okay. You just get yeah, just enough to just like, okay. Yeah, so cheers enough. to another messy ass episode of Sip and Spill. We create conversation with a little while sip and wine. Girl, you gotta let me pick it up first. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. And women all over the world are getting together and doing the best thing possible to unite us. We are shaking ass on the internet. Mm-hmm. Meg got all the bitches shaking ass off her new song with Glow. And she kind of started trying herself because she made this video. And when anytime Meg shakes ass on the internet, I just want to close it because I'm just like, bitch, my husband is on the internet. My husband is on this internet. Stop it. Because she is just lovely. everything. Everything. And all these other women are also posting the challenge and, you know, making videos and shaking them stuff. It's like 2012 Twitter. Like back when it was, you know, the thing, you know, Miss Twerk something? Say what now? Y'all know, you know, Miss Twerk something? No. Mm-hmm. You know, she was just, she was uh, tw- twerking on YouTube back, like back in the day, day like before twerking on the internet yeah, was a thing. She's one of the first ones to ever go viral with that. For twerking, twerking on the internet. Yeah. yeah. I love that she, Yeah, she made I it I love up. a bitch that has enough confidence to shake ass. Okay? And then make some money off of it, right? Hello? So, yeah. So, uh, Meg got the bitches shaking ass on Twitter and then that just got these other bitches in the uproar. They're all making videos talking about, oh, y'all are devaluing yourself because these women are choosing to shake their ass on the internet. And I just, I'm just like, let bitches do whatever the fuck they want to do. If they want to shake ass, to me, if it doesn't actually harm you, what are you worried about? I was gonna say because I just feel like it's so. It, what is it? Misogynistic to let to not allow. What I'm not trying say to say misogynistic. I'm saying you're allowed to have your opinion on how you think it's evaluating. That is but true. But why you gotta make a video about a whole video about how it's just the worst thing ever to shake at, ass on the internet? It's cool. Me, if I see something I don't like, I just scroll. That's that's a fact. If I don't like it, I'm just scrolling. I'm just scrolling. I'm about to make a two minute video about the whole situation. And I always like to say there's an audience for everything because if there wasn't an audience of people that are tuning into you shaking ass people wouldn't do it and bitch why are you and if you're supposed to be this high value woman why are you even seeing it you know you must be <laughs> how's following your feed? How's it on your feed and if you're a high value woman why do you have chest hats that's what I wanted to know actually t- take off get off social media yeah if you're high, high value, value women, women shouldn't even be on um, social media exactly women They're should not be it. on social media actually say what women should not be on social media at all <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about that yeah I feel like the people that's probably saying something don't got no ass to shake. Or do you feel like it's my, maybe jealousy? Yeah, you I ain't got no ass to shake. You can't do it. It so could be jealousy yeah. because women, there's some conservative women who feel like, uh, there's bitches who wear skirts to the, to their toes, you know, and they, they mm-hmm. wrap their hair. But she absolutely wasn't. She was, she was not, actually. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I feel like it is like the pot call and the pedal, kettle yeah. black. What ways that someone else would think that you're devalued is different than what she would say for someone else's. So it was just, it was just a whole fucking thing. And I just right. feel like, let bitches be bitches, okay? You're right about that because Kim Kardashian once said, would you put stickers on a Bentley when they asked her why she don't got no tattoos? Exactly. <laughs> So look, you got you you got your stickers. They got their ass. Mm, face. <laughs> face. Especially if she got a chest tat. Okay, she a do. She got a big chest, a chest yeah. tat. And, and I'm it, pretty sure got a baby daddy and maybe somebody in jail. Is she waiting on? And that chest tat probably was a cover up of a nigga name. <laughs> and she had on both sides too. Yeah. Right, like, like a war. Like, talking about other people being better than yeah. girl. Please, the fucking audacious. Okay, so recently uh, we got some sad news. Is it sad? I think it's kind of sad. I think it's sad. Depends on who you ask. OJ Simpson died recently. Me, I was indifferent about it. Um, I'm not going to celebrate his death, but I'm not just overly like emotional about it. I was just like, hmm, 
He died. So. I know. Him dying just brought a lot of emotions out of the whites. Because Girl. they over here like, good riddance. He did it. I, 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 and I just felt like if he did it or if he didn't, okay? He definitely did it. But, I mean, honestly, I would say that was our we first We got the United Front. If I say he didn't do it, you got to say he didn't do it either. Girl, he did kill them we people. We are a United Front right now, Samantha. Why do you think that? Because he did. If How the glove know? don't fit, acquit. Girl, you know he got fat in prison. That's why the glove didn't fit. Mm. He had a good lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, but regardless of, I feel like black people need that win. We were just coming off of Rodney. And, you know, O.J. Simpson was, um, he was kind of the black person that kind of fit in in white spaces. Yeah. So, because he, and he killed this white woman and they're like, they switched sides real quick on O.J. Yeah. And, before, um, before that happened, every all the white people love O.J. Simpson. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. All of them. So, I said, that's our win. Y'all were getting away with crimes. He, he got away with this one. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a win, but you know that's, what? That was our win. The way niggas celebrated when O.J. got off, it was a win. All right. Because <laughs> the white face, they laughing to the bank now over here. Do you know that he said he gave away all his money so he, they can't even sue him for if it was he had to give money to the families? He gave away all like, his money. Like damn near to like charities and shit. OJ gave away money? That's what I heard. That's what the streets were saying. It might be wrong, OJ but you know what? Like the that. internet will never lie to me. So why the fuck would it say that? Girl, I knew, but remember when OJ was trying to get back his sports memorabilia? He was, he, uh, and didn't he go to jail for that? He did. Yeah. And they were celebrating. That's why he went to jail. They were stealing. Nigga, beat a murder. <laughs> just and to go to jail for stealing. Go to jail for trying just to get a jersey. Just like a nigga. <laughs> trying to get his own shit back. Yeah. Ain't that some shit? Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, men around the world are now embracing their soft guy era. They are now realizing their worth, that they are more than the bare minimum. Because, you know what? Women in the world, the world are realizing who the fuck they are, so you should too. There was a video that we watched that was on TikTok where a man was basically, it was like a satire, but you know there's some truth in every joke we always say. And this man was just like saying how basically, he's like, I'm no longer pumping a gas. I'm going to sit in the car and watch TikTok videos while my girl do it. If I tell you I need this, then why aren't you sending me money to do So it's like, he's pretty much um, doing satire of the Sprinkle Sprinkle movement, what we all know is by Shira Seven. But like I keep saying to y'all, there's truth in the joke. How do y'all feel about that? You know what? You know me. I am not one to tell people what they do or do not deserve. Mm, I do. So if he feels this is what he needs in his partner, go for it. You know, there's always someone who fulfill your need. I absolutely think it's ridiculous. And I, you know, he's kind of joking. Do I think men are becoming more sassy and expecting more things from women? Absolutely. Is it to the point where I think they're watching TikToks while she pumps her gas? I hope the fuck not. Mm. Um, but... You know what? If that's what you feel like you need, that's fine. I just don't understand why we can't have things. Why can't this already be a thing before we started our thing? If y'all really want to do the soft guy era thing, why do you think y'all pushed us narrative y'all self? It wasn't until we were embracing our feminine. We were saying we were no longer accepting the bare minimum, that we were no longer going to be masculine in our relationships. And then now, all of a sudden, y'all got this little soft bitch thing y'all got going on. You know what? Let, let the bitches have something. That's all I got to say. We, we, don't, we don't get to have shit in this world. The way we feel about how white people copy our shit, that's how we feel about you niggas copying our shit. Mm. Say that shit again. Girl. It's got to be the new age. It got to be the new age. Like, we can't May I ask shit. you, how old are you? are you? You said the new age. May I ask you your I'm age? 40. You're 40. Oh, you look great for your age. Thank you. I hate when people say you look great for your age. I don't age. know. How the fuck am I supposed to look at 40? She's saying I'm old as hell. But so, it's... no, because the thing is, when I looked at him, I wouldn't have thought 40. Okay. So, that, that's why when Maybe I say that. Maybe this is 40, okay? Let's but the thing is, is it's crazy because it is 40. Because I was looking at Mari and they were talking about these. I was, they were looking at old videos and they were like, this is a 32 year old. I said, no, the fuck, that ain't a 32 year old. This is year the 40s. Those people were looking like they were 70. All of my life, Did I had to fight. Frazier was 27 when he started that show. And he and was like, insane. And he's like, balding. Balding looked like he was 50. So them people were suffering. I don't know what was going on back in or what they were drinking. It was something in the water. Yeah, this is what 40 is supposed to look like. Drug I free. Mean, there's people that do drugs that still look relatively good. Chris Brown. Mm. Whitney looked great for a long time. Whitney did look great for yeah. a long time. Yeah. She was on the right drugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She said she smokes cocaine. Not oh. crack. <laughs> it's whack. <laughs> but yeah, um, the Grizzle Grizzle movement Pretty much, I don't, I, I, I really don't care for it unless you're going to actually be, stand. I want y'all to stand 10 toes out on what y'all are saying. That means y'all are no longer providers and protectors and you can't tell us what to do. So who's going to provide and protect them? Their boyfriends? The boyfriends. Their yes. boyfriends. Their boyfriends. Because yeah. they're going to get a boyfriend. They're going to get a boyfriend. Yeah, okay. I believe it. Because you got to be gay with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but don't, doesn't a man, isn't a man obligated to good things too? I believe that everyone is entitled to good things, but men are so used to um, settling. 
respectfully. Yeah. So now that you guys are trying to embrace it, you guys are trying to do it in a way of like trying to mock yeah. women. Mm-hmm. And that's what she was saying. She's like, if you really believe that, believe it mm-hmm. and stand so sons up on it. But you're doing it in a mockery of saying, like, when do men stop trying to prove their worth? Back in the day, men couldn't do enough to prove themselves. Right. Now men couldn't care at all if you mm-hmm. chose them. They're like, I'm the prize. I'm the prize. Mm-hmm. And you are within your right to feel like you're the prize. But we're also choosing not to pick those right. prizes. So as a, as two women, what is the number one asset that a man has to have? Ooh, I think the number one thing a man has to have is ambition. I would say that's the number one thing is someone who's always, who's who can also, what's the word for it? Persevere and solve problems, you know, because there's going to be so many trials and tribulations within your relationship, whether you are going through something yourself or outside, you know, type troubles coming in. If you don't have a man who's going to be able to persevere and still want to do this with you throughout the, whatever the, com- whatever troubles may come, then, um, I think you. Know, that's when marriages have problems. It's gonna end. Mm. But if you have a man who's willing to, you know, stick it out and be like, okay, no matter, you know, I'm gonna do this with you. Yeah, that's what I look for in a partner. I mean, for me, I think outside of um, security, because that's very important to me in a partner. I mm-hmm. don't care. I do need someone to be emotional, intelligent. I need to know what your triggers are. I need you to know what that is. I think you have, like she said, good problem solving because it's like a lot of issues start because people don't know why they feel the way they feel and how to work through it. Communication. So I feel like that's very important to yeah. me that. You have at least that. And they basic. don't try either. But when you they say don't try. Sec- and that's the thing, people don't try anymore. It's just like, oh well It's easier to just yeah, give up. It's easier to just give up. I don't think it's easier to give up. I think nowadays I think people are think that other people are easier replaceable now. Mm. That's true. But that's the access true. to humans has made people has think that. Social media. Mm-hmm. So we say all that about the Grizzly Grizzly. To get, kind of get into our topic of the gender war that's been going between men and women lately. Um, so what do you think is the gender war and what what is your definition of it? So what I basically said was kind of like opposite of what you said, but it's more so of like a set expectation that you have for that specific gender. And whenever someone tries to get out of that, it's... It's That's problematic. What the war. Yeah, it's what's, what's problematic. It's like, you're a woman. Why are you doing that? Mm-hmm. And like when we always say, like, you're a man. Can't you build a house? Yeah. You're a woman. Why can't you cook? So mm-hmm. it's like little dumb shit that's like, <laughs> we say a jokey joke, but it's not a jokey joke. Right. It's for real, for real. So my opinion is, I think the gender war ga- uh, is the power struggle between men and women. Yeah. As women begin to, you know, gain more rights and become more into their own. I feel like now that women are more outspoken, women are, you know more into themselves choosing themselves and like decentering men it's because that's what's starting this kind of war between us and they're like well you're supposed to cater to our every you know Mm -hmm. every need and we're telling them like we're no longer wanting to do that anymore so what about you what do you think your uh is the reason for this kind of war expectations so yeah i think expectations (laughs) have changed a lot um basically based off of things that a woman expect nowadays and things that a man expects nowadays. Of course, I'm raised on the old law. Um, I'm I'm raised on being a man is the leader, being a provider. I expect a woman to be able to accept that. Yeah. But nowadays, you have a lot of women that are way more successful than men. Absolutely. And success brings... Insecurity. Insecurity. Could you be with the more successful woman? Like way more successful you're than you. Damn anymore? right. Okay. Jeez. So you don't care. You don't mind. Please. So you're not really. Please bring in the dough. He's, okay. he's in his soft guy era now. Because <laughs> I, I worked I'm, hard enough. I'm going to do me. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. hold me down. I'm going to do me. Yeah. But please bring in the dough. And your dough don't even got to go to a no bills. Just. I like Bring that. It on. Okay. See, I feel like that's the difference between you though, because some men be like, "Why I gotta be the protector and provider? Why?" But I mean, we just <laughs> said, like, don't you want to protect that feminine energy? Because you want to be a man. Me, I don't feel like a man if I don't, if I ain't going fifty fifty with you, baby. I'm not a man. Okay. The conversation that we are roommate. tired of having. You look, you're about to make the man go crazy yeah. in his comments they because going they to attack you. They <laughs> hate when we when we say it, they want to blow our house up. They, so maybe when a man says it, they might respect it more. So yes, going fifty fifty on bills. Nah, I ain't doing fifty fifty. You're not doing it. Nah. Like you say, I ain't be, going fifty fifty. I'm a hundred. Okay. At the end of the day, I still have to live. I'm not gonna stay in a one bedroom apartment. So I still got to live. I got to yeah. pay my bills regardless if a female stand with me or not. Mm-hmm. So for you to come in and me to say, hey, take care of that light bill. If you want to move in with me, take care of this. Take care of this mortgage. No, nah, I ain't doing that. <sighs> Thank you. Wow. Thank you. They, wow. There's a bitches around the world that we <laughs> we appreciate. They just dropped their you. panties to that line and right did, there. And, and did. And did. 
Uh, so there's this video. Um, he's a kind of a famous TikToker, I would say. He always put in his videos about, you know, supporting women. I really hope he is what he talk about because I love his videos. So if you were fake, I'm gonna be really mad. I'm gonna uppercut you in your chin. But uh, there was this video. Uh, consciously was talking about how you know what's also contributing to uh, the gender war is that men. Um, aren't being attacked. We're actually, you know, telling y'all things and y'all are taking it offensively. Mm -hmm. And he was saying about this book called We Are Core, We Are So Cool, something like that. And that um, this man was pretty much saying how he's offended, actually, when a woman speaks. It bothers him when a woman corrects Mm -hmm. him. And he's actually battling between, you know, being submissive to the white man and going home and he feels he also has to be submissive to his wife. Mm -hmm. That he... uh, doesn't feel like when his girlfriend talked back to him the first time, he was shocked. He was confused. He hated her. Mm-hmm. It was like, it was just too much for him. And I definitely think that's what's going on right now, especially with the TikTok age. I realize that anything a woman says to, even if we're not bashing y'all mm-hmm. because we say something, it, it offends y'all. Let me give y'all this crazy example. Um, This woman was made a TikTok and she said how um, women in the U.S. are buying more homes than men. And that, you know, young single women are... Lead. Yeah, young yeah, leading. women are leading and buying homes. Oh, for sure. And all these, that's all she said. And all these men in her comments are coming and trying to attack her, mm-hmm. saying horrible things about her, threatening her life, all because she said women are buying more homes than men. She didn't even talk about men or bash men. It's proven statistic right now that there's more successful women in the world right now than men. Right. Proven. So why, what about that makes men so angry? Because they're not it's doing the their, one, their bare, no, the their only, function. The, 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 only one, the only ones that are angry are the ones who are not doing what they're supposed to be doing with their lives. Okay. And I also feel like, why do you look at women as a competition instead of them as being a as counterparts? A compliment. Or someone? Yeah. Exactly. That's My what, woman going to compliment me. Like that's the problem. Yeah. I feel like once you stop being in competition with these women, you wouldn't see them their greatness as a downfall for you. You can see that it's an addition to what you can have mm. and right. what you can bring. Yeah. Because we actually are better together. But because of the gender wars, it's extremely hard to find a middle ground that makes the most sense because we're always tra- well I don't know if we're always trying to but I think subconsciously we're always trying to one up each other like oh I'm a single woman doing this so you're so I don't really think in a relationship we're trying to one up relationship, each other we're not talking about relationships we're talking about oh, singles as singles, in singles yeah. individuals were acting like oh well I'm doing all this by myself so what do you bring to the table okay. it's like w- women are treating dating like that as well like what yeah. do you bring to the table because I bring this yeah. you know because we're, we're getting such we're in we're in our masculine girl we are we, we are fighting. And I'm not I'm not trying to be in my mask at, at all. I want to be as delicate as a flower. I want to be as delicate as the white women y'all care about so much. So do you agree with what he said? Yeah, I think a lot of times I've even though it's in my relationship, anytime I've, you know, gave a correction, no matter how loving and careful I chose my words to it, the first thing it was defensiveness. It was like, oh, well, you must am I doing such a bad job? Well, I'm just not gonna do this. It's always the extreme. Like if I'm saying correcting one thing about you, that doesn't mean, oh, delete your Instagram. I'm like, maybe just don't like every fat ass picture. It's like, oh, I'll just won't ever be on social media again. Like, no, like that's not what I'm saying. So it's just like that's intimidation, insecurity. Yeah. And childish. It's just when when we say something to you, it's because we care about the relationship. When a woman stops talking is when it's the deadliest. So that means she's probably planning her exit and you take it as oh, she don't care no more. She just stopped talking. She's not bothering me no more. No, she's about to leave you. Mm-hmm. And y'all get dumbfounded and you're like, oh, I didn't see it coming. But she will already told you everything to do to make the relationship work and you refuse to listen and when she stopped talking it was too late mentally checked out mentally we always check out mentally before mm-hmm. we check out physically that's a fact so how do you think that it's going because of you know was, so we all decide that we agree with what he's saying right because yeah yeah okay there's so, definitely a gender war okay so how do we feel like it's going how's it going yeah, yeah how do you feel like, like it's going um i don't i don't really think like ha- 70% of the community is liking their own sex right now. Yeah. So I think that's really where it's going. It was yeah. going horribly. Okay. It's going in a bad way because if you know it or not, for a man to have, to be so sensitive about what a woman does, that means you got women tendencies in you somewhere. Well, we all do have feminine and masculine energy. We we go, we always say that on this show. We yeah. both we possess both. I don't think it's not wrong to have some feminine don't energy, that. but he's saying women you, tendency. What, yeah, he's a tendency. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying it's yeah. like so I don't think like, about having so feminine certain energy. certain things certain things a man shouldn't react to. As in, e- emotionally things like I shouldn't feel intimidated by what a woman's opinion is about me. Yeah, 
if, I shouldn't feel intimidated if a woman has, you know, a little more success than me or making a little bit more money than me. Yeah. Or if I meet a woman and she are, you'll be surprised if you meet a man and you own your house, you own your car, you own your shit. How you will scare the shit out of half of these men. Yeah, they oh, absolutely. Get, yeah, they get angry. Exactly. Because they can't control you at that point. Yeah. But a lot of it now is leading to females tired of dealing with niggas. So who are they dealing with? Females. Yeah. Half the niggas out here is... Are you saying this is why women are gay? No, for sure. <laughs> I'm not gay. No, sure. but I mean, no, it don't sure. sound too crazy. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> okay. No, seriously. Cause um, just think about it. A woman know what a woman want, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. And if I'm dealing with a nigga who act just like a female, I yeah. might as well just deal with a motherfucking female that know everything how to please me. Well, shout out to the men who are still men out there, please. <laughs> Cause I don't, I, I don't <laughs> want to go bitch. <laughs> yeah. We're not trying to go that way. Um, I only feel like how it's going. I feel like it's, it's only progressively getting worse. Because yeah. The thing is, with social media, we are able to filter our biases. So if you he- are on these podcasts that say the shit that you like, you're like, yeah, because that's what the fuck I was saying. Send right. it to your friends, and we all turn into fucking bird bitches. Yeah, I think it's just a magnifying glass on it. I feel like. In real life, uh, we men and women do kind of like each other. Yeah. You know, I have male friends. I When I go out around guys, I don't feel like they're trying to, you yeah. know. To, but it's just, there's a there's a percentage of men who are, and women, who are magnifying it. That, and mm-hmm. trying to make it seem like it's way worse than what it is. It is bad. It is terrible. But I feel like in real life, like, let's give an example. There's just people on the Red Pill podcast who try to try to make you believe most women are going after this 1%, 1% of guys, you know. But in real life, most people are dating people who are within the same tax bracket. Um, they're dating people who are making around the same money as them, who have the same beliefs as them. Most, the average women, even my... My friend group, we're not going after the basketball players, the football players, yeah. the one percent of guys. We're dating regular men. So don't let the internet have you believing that we're outside really fighting each other. I feel like there is a war that's going on, but it's just that social media and the internet is putting its magnifying glasses on it, and we're inheriting that, and we're just taking that in and thinking, oh, this is what's actually happening. And it's like it's really not. Yeah. So how do you feel that the gender war has affected dating? Um, right now, I think it's caused this whole uh, 4B movement going on. What's 4B? 4B is women in Korea are saying they're not dating men. They're not having their babies. They're not doing anything. As a, they're decentering men completely. There's a whole movement going on. Mm-hmm. And Korean women are very serious. Where they, have I been? They have the lowest birth rate out of everyone in the world. But there you know, are, that's what that's part of the abortion thing, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because women are saying we're no longer having these babies. Yeah. So that And that's why it's so strict, because we don't. We don't want to have children because mm-hmm. because they're seeing what's happening there and they're mm-hmm. trying to prevent it from happening here. Yeah, that's why we are heading that way. Most of, I mean, there's a yeah, there's a lot of women that are our age that were like, we are not, so content with not having children. Where we do not want to have these men's babies no more. We don't feel comfortable Some of having y'all's babies. To stop. We don't feel Today. safe. Yeah, we don't feel safe having y'all's babies. We don't feel security having y'all's babies. We feel like we're always going to end up as a single mother. So we're just like, no, we're t- over this heterosexual relationships that no longer benefit us. So um, I feel like that's where it's heading. And that's the gap. That's what's um, affecting dating is that we're seeing things and we're we're having conversations and we're having community and women are telling other women what we're going through. And then the younger women are like, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. So it's really affecting dating. And I feel like that's what Lisa and Sells and all these angry men who hate women because they don't want to, they can't compete where they can't compare. Okay. Mm. And how you feel about that? Do you think that it's the younger generation that's like that or do you think so do you think social media has an influence on it a hundred percent because the 40 year old women are talking now right they're Mm -hmm. on tiktok telling us about how they were traditional wives and how it didn't benefit them and now they're 40 their husband left them for a 19 year old young Mm -hmm. woman and now this is what's going to happen to you if you don't have financial security if you let a man be your plan so we're they're they're listening to that consuming that and they're like a man can't be my plan right so they're becoming more hyper independent hyper independent actually because they're doing Everything they feel necessary to not ever be the trad wife that are going through divorces, mm-hmm. live going from driving Mercedes to not even be able to live in an apartment. Right. 
I feel like it's expected dating because we always assume the fucking worst when it comes to getting into any scenario because a lot of people on the internet trauma bond. Yeah. They're like, oh, I can relate to that. I can relate to that instead of having their own experience because we all all are thinking, like I said earlier, I'm like, it's on the internet. It has to be true. And it's <laughs> <laughs> but your no, own advice. I mean, that's true, though. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people are on the internet just on there just to trauma dump on each other. Like some of these things. Like I Like Risa Tisa. Yeah. She goes like, her whole time. Because the thing is, I feel like sometimes advice. these are things we don't need to know. And it's a lot of them sometimes because you lack accountability because you could have ended this, this in and there. And I'm not trying to say that some of these people didn't deserve these situations or X, Y, and Z, but it's like we have to also be in charge of what we allow to affect us and how we use that information. You know like, what? You're right. Because I was, after watching the whole Risa Tisa thing, there was this guy that was talking to me. And he was trying to get to know me, and everything he said to me, I thought it was lying. That's what I'm saying. I just like, thought he was like, all because of Risa Tisa. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It has nothing to do with you. You've never yeah. met this woman in your life, but you feel like you related to maybe one percent of what she said online. And you were like, "That's enough for me to say, fuck niggas." Yeah, right. it did. I because you this, feel like you've been through it. I, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, feel like we gotta, I thought this thing was really. Lying. And I feel like we got to stop feeling jaded. We got to still go into things with just as much love as we like we came into it with. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's why I always say, "I'm like, I'm gonna always be a lover girl. Ain't nothing a nigga could ever fucking do to make me think that I don't got the fucking love of my life around the corner." Now, not being me being jaded off of someone else's trauma. You are jaded off of somebody else's trauma, but we don't realize we do it because it's so common. Because how many times do we go online and people are, are boasting about their partner? Yeah. No one is really boasting about their partners because people are boasting. People are getting jealous or someone's trying to get with them. We assume that, oh, he's only good to her. That's the only good man left. Mm-hmm. And it's not like that. Okay. So kind of back to what you were saying. I didn't want to get too much into it because we we're going to talk about it. Um, I feel like expectations hasn't changed very much just a value of different things change so by that we kind of mean like okay back in the day i feel like men had to do more to win a woman over um he had to make sure he goes all the bills were paid he had to actually go to the door he had to actually meet her parents it was more mm-hmm. of like you know a lot of work mm-hmm. to courting um, it was a lot courting. of courting yeah. it was a lot of courting yeah. so now men don't have to court as much to get a woman but now we expect something different we expect mm-hmm. y'all to be actual good people mm-hmm. we expect y'all to uh have emotional intelligence versus when women didn't really expect those things from a man yeah. so do you think expectations have gotten higher toward, since modern dating than more than traditional dating or do you think the expectations are just put in different places I think it's just different positioning of expectations. Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily higher. I just think is <clears throat> now people expect different things. Yeah. And but that's honest, the main issue is what men are saying is that women's expectations right now are too high. I don't think it's too high. I just think it's different. Mm-hmm. So right now I think there's a big comparison on lifestyles mm. and I expect, well, a woman will expect her man to be able to make her keep up with what she sees. Mm-hmm. Like why I, why I, why we ain't going to Tulum? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. why well, I ain't get that bracelet? But I why also... I don't get this? You know, so it's it's an expectation, but you also have to understand nowadays what things are now are. Like you said earlier, you will stay with your man if you're ugly. If the situation was good for you, mm-hmm. right now a lot of men. It's sad to say, a lot of men only 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 can offer a real woman that doing someone on is is money. Hey. Long as you doing this, forking this out, she gonna be around. Mm-hmm. She gonna stay with you, but she's expecting that from him. Mm-hmm. The man is has men right now today really don't have too many expectations because they not bringing a lot to the table to, mm. in today's society. Say that shit, please, yeah. please. And I'm just speaking as far as grown men. Like from what I see, that's going on right now. A lot of these niggas not really stepping up and doing what really should be done. They they some car borrowing, weed smoking, game playing. That's just what the whole world is right now. Half these niggas be high. Don't got, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's weird. It's weird out here right now. Yeah. Even for the females. It's, it's. Yeah. I can attest to that. Cause remember when I told you, cause there was this that guy that I told you that's super successful. He wants to date me, but the only way he can show up for me is monetarily. Yeah. Like he cannot. And have, that's not enough. And that's not enough for no. me. It's like, yeah. because it's like, if that's the case, then why can't I find someone where, and I believe it's out there. So it's like, I get you have all this money. You have all this power. And that's and, great. But, but it's like, what That else? can't be your personality. And I feel mm-hmm. like just like they always say that we can't, being good looking is not enough for us. It's not enough for us, yeah, because there's always a batter bitch. There always, always is a batter bitch, especially in Houston. Yeah. Always. Girl, all over the world, there's Shit. always a batter bitch. I'm, I'm going to say Houston, because Houston is like the mecca of batter Houston bitch. is not real right now, though. It's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> this shit is not real right it's now. It's not real. But uh, we were turning up on a Sunday having a great ass time. We did. Girl, yeah, Houston is not real. <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely agree. Uh, I think the 
expectations when people say oh women expect too much now i feel like i don't think we expect too much we actually expect less of y'all when it comes to certain things and more of y'all when it comes to other things that's just what it is yeah i think that we value things that are more important that are fundamental to keeping a relationship together mm-hmm. than we are more so because i guess there are some people that are going to look and say they want what looks good yeah. but ultimately we don't know if what looks good is actually what is good because how many times do we see those tiktok couples that the nigga end up killing this bitch yeah. girl because it's expect- looking good expectations come from comparisons mm-hmm. if you believe it or not it comes from comp- from comparison maybe, like maybe it does so you will look can, yeah. you will just say for instance if you Go on a double date. It's you and your man, you and your man. You don't know her yet, though. But you see, like, she, her man her man bought a bottle. Your man getting up from the section and going to get one drink. One drink is crazy. I'm just thinking, <laughs> I'm just saying, though. But that's all he, get, that's yeah. all he can afford. But you know what's crazy? That's what happened one time that's, when that's I all went he can out afford. with someone. I'm going to tell that story because her man was getting her one you know, drink I'm, himself. Yeah, and she got so mad because my she came, like, my, me and my friends were out. And she came with a guy. And my friends bought a bottle. He didn't put in on it. He was going to the bar and he got like two drinks for them. And she was like, why don't you get a drinks for the table? Because you were drinking off their bottle. Yeah. And he was all like, well, I'm getting drinks for us. Well, I his expectations coming from other people. Mm-hmm. I mean, but I'm saying, I I get that, but I'm like, I, but that's what what goes back to dating within your league, dating within your pockets. And we're going to get into that later because that's just a question, but I'm just saying, I feel like comparison is a thief of joy. If you think that him buying two drinks is equivalent to someone buying a bottle is actually insane to me. Because if they're But able- you were okay with him buying two drinks. It wasn't until you saw the bitches, the one getting the bottles. Comparison. Was a problem. Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, that was my friend. That nigga might have spent his me. last $28 on them two drinks. He probably and that did. sounds like a fundamental problem that you should not be in. You should not be spending your last $28 on a bitch that's <laughs> comparing to a nigga that bought a bottle because it ain't never going to be the same. He <laughs> not thinking that she finna compare me so they situation. It's always, a, it's always a comparison, though. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Comparis- comparison brings in expectation. Mm. Not you dropping gems. But niggas always compare, you know, y'all always compare between each other. Lies. Y'all, y'all I'm, I'm not in the same road as anybody in this but world. But that comes with age, ever. though. You have to think about you it. You keep trying are... to call me old. Everything comes with that... age. You look good to be 40. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> actually, it's actually me complimenting you on your wisdom and your growth. That's what I'm doing. But, yeah. but it, it might sound different to you because it's how you're perceiving it. It's, it's projection. Pr- projection. You're but I ain't going to lie, though. At the end of the day, it's the day about. It's not about age. <laughs> the day I, gotta end. I ain't you do it end. <laughs> but it's not about age. I kind of think it's about what you have inside yourself. I, mm. I thought like this when I was nineteen years old. Like, Girl, we did just say a nigga when she died ninety nine years old. Girl, so honestly, and do. it don't so, matter. Oh, about so age. you just feel like it's either in you or it's not. It's got to be in you. It got to be in you. That's okay, true. I gotta can respect that. Okay, so we saw a TikTok video how it was basically saying that because earlier me and Samantha were trying to put this together, we weren't sure if um the idea of people saying that we don't we can't get certain things is because of it's racial. Like the gender wars is only racial. And it only is a bigger deal when white women want to be independent and not when black women because we said that black men are okay with black women being independent and it's only a problem when white women want to be independent i think so too i know that's what we said but yeah. when we watched the video it said it's not about racial it's more ideology yeah it's because we said now that women are more progressive and want more men are still kind of stuck and the conservative. They said the more that Actually, women... They're, they're they, worse. Yeah, they said the women women are more, more progressive and, and men, men are, are more conservative. conservative. Like As women gain more rights, men are regressing even more to more conservative values. So it's like they have an issue with women um, expecting more and doing more for themselves. And even like in... in and I think I think U.S. and Korea was the worst. And like we said, Korea is where the forbidden movement is happening. Like <clears throat> it's just too adverse of things happening. Like I said, women are you know buying more houses by themselves. They're doing more things for themselves, and more men are living in their parents' basement. Mm-hmm. So it's like as these things are going to two opposite places. Is what's creating this war between us because y'all are not catching up. Mm. Uh, we understand You're that not being, up. y'all are do it's more our self preservation and self serving. Being c- progressive is more self serving for women. It makes more sense for us to be com- progressive, and being conservative is more self serving for men. Yeah, that that stuff that um serves you way more. If mm. you have that traditional woman who stays at home, takes care of the family, doesn't speak, th- th- does what you say. That serves y'all. So because of that, it's causing a movement of y'all regressing more deeper into that because you're like, we want what our 
parents, not even your parents, because your dad was more progressive than you are right now. <laughs> you want what your grandparents had. People are like, oh, we don't have what our grandparents had. We would go back to the old days our grandparents loved. Your grandma suffered. And your grandma also beat your grandpa. You know what I'm saying? You, you're you talking about a time where she would hit him with the frying pan and shoot him and y'all would still be together. And have a whole other family. Let's whole get into that. family around the block and y'all still... That's what you're talking about. And they accepted you are, it. You are romanticizing suffering. The mother don't accepted even know. it. The mother's accepted right. that. That's what Yeah. The, so it's like you asking for a time where women actually were sad. But it also goes back to, it goes back to control. Yeah. Being controlled situation makes them feel empowered. And I feel like we got to that's what we have to separate from. It's like there's so much more to a relationship or the fundamentals of what we can get from each other than who's in control. What? OK, I have a question because control is not really that important to us. But why is control so important to men? Because they daddies left them. <laughs> Well, I don't think control is important. I think leadership is important to men. Okay. So control and leadership are two different things. So me as a man, I don't want to control anybody. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't want you to be a yes woman to me, but I am going to be the leader though. So, but I'm not going to lead you in a direction to where something is going to go wrong with us. So do I expect you to follow my leadership? Yeah, because I'm showing you that the direction that I'm placing us in is the right way for us to be. Okay, mm -hmm. but the difference of between those things, because uh, it's, it's a very thin line between control and, and leadership. leadership. Yeah. The one thing that makes that different is the amount of respect you have for your partner. Exactly. Because if you respect your partner, you feel like they are leading you. If you don't respect your partner, you feel like they're controlling you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But why wouldn't you respect your partner? Please, yeah, there's a couple reasons why I'm you want to respect like, your partner. Why? There's a couple reasons. Your, your partner do dumb shit sometimes. Like, All right. So if he do dumb shit, say for instance, he fucked the money off, I don't know, gamble, or he got a, a bad habit, yeah. or he cheat on you, that's the point of me saying, I'm going to lead the right direction. So if I'm doing it, I'm not leading us in the right direction. My leadership is coming from decision making. And my decision making is going to be on point to lead us in the right direction. Okay, cool. I just want to know, let, me let you know, maybe you're not always right. You know, maybe your leadership not always the way you're supposed to go. Just consider your partner's, you know, opinion sometimes. I, don't, I feel like the best thing is to, whatever you do, better, stronger. Mm -hmm. You do, you take care of that. Whatever she do, stronger. She's taking care of that. Right. It's more of a partnership. Right. Compliment each other. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like, oh, because he says this, that's always right. Me, I would would like to think my partner, you know, will have the best decision always. Mm -hmm. So I can just be like, oh, yeah, because I don't want to think. I would love for you to always make the best decision. That's the, that's the thin line but, she's saying. Between. But you don't always. So I want to have a partner who's all, also open to listen to me when he's not making mm -hmm. the best decision for us. So um, let's talk about the um, how to bridge this gender war that, that we have going on right now. And um, uh, what are a few ways you think we can kind of bridge this war gap so i put on. for the way that we can bridge the um, um gender war is by being vulnerable we have to have a very open honest conversation about where we're at what we need and what we can how we can build from that because a lot of times when people operate in the space of the gender wars it's coming off a place of hurt no mm -hmm. one is in this gender war because they're happy go lucky and they're trying to spread love they are trying to separate what ultimately could be the best thing for us. Cause they said there's nothing, they said there's nothing more powerful than I said, they said, I think it said black love or something like that. I don't know where I saw it. Maybe I saw it on the video. Maybe I made it up. <laughs> I don't fucking know. But I ultimately do know that there has to be a lot of conversations of vulnerability taking place because we need to put ourselves in the thick of it to bridge that gap. We need to know that I'm here with you. And mm. a lot of times it's not, it's not, us against each other. It's us against our problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's how I feel. True. Uh, I I said that we need to stop meeting each other with a place of defensiveness. defensiveness mm -hmm. Kind of what you're saying is yeah. meet each other at a place of curiosity. Why does your partner think the way they think? Why do men mm -hmm. think the way they think? Like, you know, it's, we come from a place of hurt with, with a lot of it. And it's like the first part, the first thing you do is like, oh, uh, that's not how it's, you know, we yeah. always want to be complacent of defensiveness. And, yeah. I think it's more important to be in a place of curiosity. And I another thing is is stop telling the other sex what they deserve. I don't I that thing will never make sense to me. I would never tell a man you don't deserve this. I will tell my what I would talk about is what my man deserves. But I'm not on the internet telling men 
who they should date or once you reach a certain age, you hit a wall or you don't deserve this or because you're broke, you don't deserve a good I woman. I feel like, especially when it comes from the opposite sex, I feel like when it yeah. comes from the opposite sex, it's more divisive. It's more divisive. I feel like if I hear a woman telling me like, bitch, you got three kids and you got three baby daddies, I could probably take them like, damn, you right, bitch. Yeah. But when a man is telling me that, it comes with a different set of ears because it's it like, does. you're not giving birth to these kids. And you don't go to postpartum. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like once we stop the stop telling said, the sex said, what they deserve. Yeah, that would definitely help for it. So, mm-hmm. What about you? I think what could help is just the communication side. What I think affects us the most is the communication. So a lot of times people get involved in situations that they don't fully know a person yet. Yeah. So you just fall into this deep emotionally love real quick. Boom, y'all moving together. Me. You don't really know how she is. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Your expectations are different. And then, boom, in three months you figure out who she really is. It's yeah. like, oh, hell no. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This just don't this don't do shit. Or this nigga is really lazy or his kids is dirty. You know what I'm saying? Like his kids are dirty and diabolical, please. It's just I think that people jump into things too quick. So it automatically we start off as a negative. I don't even really know you like that. Mm-hmm. All I know is we kicked it off at the bar. I met you, you look good. The sex was great for the last two, three weeks. Come move in. So that starts a dynamic. Yeah. A yeah. bad dynamic of us going down the wrong road automatically. But say if we took time, say, hey, man, look, let's wait a little minute. Let's bag up a little bit. Now, now I know, like, all right, she spent the night a couple of times. I don't like how she sleep. Mm-hmm. That's more than enough, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't like this or I don't like that. But to bridge the gap a little bit, I just think that we have to have more of the communication side. Like, let me know what you really want. Let me know what you really enjoy. Let me Coming know what you don't enjoy. Coming from the man that lies about missing bitches. I do. I'm sorry. I do. <laughs> I don't believe this. Lies. See, 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 this is the shit that be pissing me. Lies about missing bitches, but you want like a communication. Let them no, know that what is. they really You got to communicate. Communicate to well, me. Well, you got to say, yeah, you, 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 you got to say, yeah, you still got to say, I don't got no bitch, so I ain't going <laughs> to yeah. communicate. But, but if she ever wants to know, I need her to know that you 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 still working on you, okay? Yeah. You still working on you. missing her. Yeah, that's, that's facts. <laughs> okay, so. So let's get into some motherfucking questions. My question is, do you feel like the black community obsesses over gender like ro- gender like roles or the gender wars too much? I think so too because the black community especially have a power struggle within um the household. The household. Um I feel like b- white well I'm, not, I'm sorry to use white people as an example, but that's that's the best example I know. White men and white men, women ha- already have a understanding of their roles in their relationship um a lot of that's why you get that you know that fit feminine white delicate thought like they already know like they're going to pilates and going to get some starbucks right after yeah they understand that they'll take a more traditional uh role what black women unfortunately have never had the opportunity for the most part to have that traditional role because we always have to work so it's more of a power struggle to us because we're like well we're working we're paying pills we're we're in our masculine and white women we we never really had to be in our masculine so we're just going to be this submissive to our husband so within the black community it's a real 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 power struggle with how we are able to uh our roles in the relationship and we're st- we're trying to figure that out and we're trying to you know learn how to, we can best be in a relationship with each other and be a, be successful because we always we also want black love black love black love but this black love that we're trying to speak of looks different to everyone. Mm. So, yeah, I think there's a real power struggle between us. I think every race goes through the same thing. Really? Yeah. Mm. Um, and I think it's... Except the Koreans. Don't bitches know how to shut the fuck Girl, up. Girl, can you please leave well, them no. out of it? I'm saying, don't bitches know how to Kore- shut the Koreans fuck up. Koreans and Latinos, that's true. That's what you would think. Mm-hmm. But every race goes through the same thing. Yeah. Every race goes through... Well, we're talking about specifically black people. Do you feel like we, we obsess over it too much? Because I feel like when it comes to like TED Talks and podcasts, it's mostly black people with the 50-50s. Black people about, yeah. these black women don't deserve you know this. Why? They're not doing this. Because this the thing with this, this the thing with minorities, blacks, whatever. A man feels like a black woman, all she wants is money. All she wants is money. All y'all want is money. But we be with so, the brokest niggas, so how is that the case? I can't relate. I feel like it's because we see our mothers and we realize we want the adverse. Because I'm you, like, for example, I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm saying my sister and I had the same mother and we went about it differently. My mother was always the breadwinner, X, Y, and Z, no matter if she had a man or not. So I decided I'm not going to be with a man that can't be a breadwinner. Mm -hmm. And my sister looked at it differently. She's like, well, I can be the breadwinner and I'll be okay with that. Mm -hmm. 
and we have two different, the same mother, but looked at it differently. But it's, it's, it's like a one percenter. It might be that percentage of that thought might be very little. A lot of women nowadays, that's what they want. They want to make the security that you speak of that most black women speak of is financially. Actually, They'll get your ass. You'll get your ass. Well, a lot of okay a, a, with 50 50. I would disagree with you. More of more American black women are really OK with with 50 50. They're not trying. I'm telling you from the community they're talking about. They're like, well, I'm OK with splitting posts with the man. We can come over here. Um, I'll, I'll cook and clean and pay bills. They're bragging about it. Mm. So yeah, you, that's something I would never brag about, girl. And it's just like they're even the ones who are making videos about how it's okay. This one girl I was getting to on TikTok, she was like, "I split bills with my boyfriend. How would I expect him to pay all the bills? Because he's trying to get it, he's trying to get out the mud like I am." They are proud bill splitters. So yes, she was white. I, do I? Huh? She was white. She was white. So You're right. Don't, don't don't put us in there. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> this, this generation are uh, they're proud bill splitters though. So. I don't agree with that. I'm going to get into your question, though. Do you prefer modern dating or traditional dating? Oh, I, I can't put a, la- a label on modern or traditional. Like, what is what is the difference between modern dating and traditional dating? Okay. Tell modern- me the difference of what you think it is. Okay, modern dating is more of, you know, texting, hanging out, uh, you know, chilling, um, having sex prematurely, uh going on trips immediately versus traditional dating is more courting, getting to know the parents, getting to know the family, marrying her quickly, uh, having children quickly, you know, moving into, moving into, you know, rushing, moving together quickly. Those are, I think are a couple differences. Um, with, with the way you describe it, I think I believe in both. Mm. I was gonna say I'm a hybrid dater. I want, I want, yeah. I want them both. Like, I want them both. Yeah. yeah. So it, there's no way, I'm not gonna lie. It's me being an entrepreneur. There's my life has a, my life doesn't have a set schedule to yeah. it. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I'm a plan a sedate every Thursday night, baby. It's not I can't do that. Oh, that would piss me off. But what I can do is surprise you with the spontaneous things that I can do immediately for you, and and that meaning like, hey, what? Let's go to Cancun no more. We don't need no luggage. We don't need nothing. Let's just go. I think you know it's what I'm more saying? modern dating. So I feel like everything you describe it is modern dating. But I also stu- I also believe in the. Let me see how you treat your mama. You know what I'm saying? Like let me. Let me let, how's you and your mama relationship? Do you have any children? You, yes, I have two kids. Okay, is it same? Well, no, I have two two okay. separate mothers. So when you were dating them, were you established or were you um getting to where you're at now? I was building myself up. Okay, so do you feel like how you dated them? You could date other women or you feel like it has to be completely different. Because that's what I'm saying. We're going back to like traditional or what's called because you're going to date. So the way I dated then is different than the way I date now because I'm in a different, I'm different. I'm in a different life. I'm, I think different. So I really couldn't even compare that because the dates we used to do then, I I mean, the dates I would do now, I couldn't do then. Yeah. The shit I could do now, I couldn't do then. Okay. So yeah. it was like, I couldn't do certain things to show how I had interest in a woman. So couldn't. the date is only as good as a nigga's tax bracket, ladies. It's <laughs> I'm not. telling y'all. It's only, as good, it's, it's only as good as a nigga interest in you. That's true. That's, that's even the, more true. That's a fact. That's even more true. It's only as good as a I was going to say, because this piggybacks off of what I was just asking, mm-hmm. but I was like, do you think it is necessary to put a woman in your budget? That's the last question. To put her in my budget. Yeah. Should you add dating to your budget? That has to be in my budget. But I'm going to tell you this. I don't date just for the woman. I date because I want to go too. At, period. That's nice. I so, love that. Yeah. So it ain't, not, it don't, don't ever think it's just like, oh, mm. he's doing this for me. No, I want to go too. Period. So that's, that's, that's my only thing. So yeah. of course, we, I'm putting we, I'm putting us in the budget. I feel like and that's how that. men should yeah. think about it. I feel like men are thinking I'm dating her so she, I can get something out of it, or I'm yeah. dating for oh. her, oh. make her happy. Yeah. But if you're thinking about dating for you too, you yeah. will have you a would more enjoy dating experience. way more. I'm putting us in the budget because baby, you gonna you gonna eat 
great. We're going to go to the places that you always want to go. I want to go, too. Right. So you know, I'm putting us in the budget. Sure. I like that. Take That's me to where you want to go so we can have a good time. Man, for okay. sure. So you ready to wrap it up? Yeah, we're okay. done. So thank y'all for following us on this journey about bridging the gender wars. Questions, comments, concerns can always be left in the comments and or in the DMs because Sammy going to answer it and I might just like it. I hope this is a healing moment and we get you know, I really together. do feel that I'm so sick of these conversations that we repetitively talk about every single year and I want us to understand it's just a misunderstanding on both parts that can just really be easily communicated. Just date people who that you, you like. With. Just date who you that like. Hard. I'm not arguing about no man about anything that I don't agree with. Even yeah, if they're date. ugly. <laughs> you mean unless they're broke. <laughs> <laughs> also on all social media platforms at the Real Spill Spill except Twitter, which is Sip and Spill One. It gives a five star rating. It's with the five, five star, star bitches. Ow. Ow. And if you haven't already, uh let's go ahead and you can reintroduce yourself. And then tell and them where to follow you. Found you. And, yeah. yeah, make sure y'all follow me at Layton's underscore third ward HCX. Come down to Third Ward and get you something to eat, man. Best food in the city. We on emancipation and Wheeler. Come holler at us. Appreciate y'all again. Yeah. It was a pleasure. We appreciate you. Thanks for taking your time yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sip wine, wine, wine Kick my feet up when I get time And as I recline Take another sip, let my thoughts on wine, wine Sip it and spill it Sip it and spill it, sip it and spill it the tea Sip it and spill it